Good morning. Another cub vlog today. There are a lot of things that I want to uh, share with you. Uh, we live in challenging times. And because I'm not uh, vaccinated as yet, I expected this issue will come sooner or later. Uh, what would happen if I can't even attend church on the Sunday? Uh, because the new SOP says that you have to be double dose. You have to complete your double dose vaccination to be allowed entry. I think not just in the church, a lot of supermarkets, shopping malls and other restaurants they are enforcing this new SOP I think I would share two particular things on this new SOP what constitutes a church if you really look at the Bible the New Testament the church is as inclusive as it can be 1st Corinthians 14 Paul talks about why you should be careful you know, that even if you speak in tongues only two or three people with interpretation if there isn't interpretation you should keep quiet why is that so? because they expect newcomers they expect unbelievers to be in their midst they, they, and these are house churches which means I'm sure many believers would invite their friends they would invite people to join their services so that one way to evangelize and really if you read any church growth books uh, I think basically personal evangelism which means a friend share the gospel and normally one way is to actually invite your friend to church and that is the main factor why people come to know Jesus Christ because they got invited to church and they like what they see what they hear hearing the word of God some are not converted in the first or second Sunday but they come to know the Lord through church services so the church is as inclusive as it could be. There's no other organization or institution, even in ancient times, that opens door to everyone. Why? Because theologically, the gospel is for everyone. God does not want anyone to go to hell God does not want anyone to perish but to obtain salvation through the knowledge of truth through the gospel of Jesus Christ so basically the church as a gathering of the saints or gathering of believers believers coming together that is the church anyone can come anyone can join so that is my first and main reason why I think this new SOP has crossed the line I'm sure there are counter arguments you know for public health but let me just counter that by saying for the past 18 months when we were allowed to open and there are many churches that remain closed why did we open I told my church several times if you come to church to worship there's bound to be risk but if you love the Lord and believe in His protection then um, you come in obedience to His commandment together together because in Hebrews 11 I think verse 25 says or Hebrews 10 do not neglect the meeting or the gathering of believers more so when you see the day approaching 
and now the day is approaching and there is no condition attached to anyone including the sick and infirm and nowadays we are so scared of uh, infectious disease and so on but the church wasn't like that people bring the sick lepers come to Christ and if you think the church is the body of Christ and Christ is present and one evangelistic tool is also people are brought in the midst of the church and they are healed so are we now saying that only the healthy can come to the church and really we have to think this through carefully so it comes to my second reason is it's about faith a couple of weeks ago uh, I preached last Sunday just two days ago but before this uh, more than two weeks ago I also preached I preached on the divine protection or protection of God at the end time and Revelation 7 talks about the angels sealing God's servants on their foreheads with the seal of the living God so if God protects us in his mysterious way by his seal why are we stopping others are we saying that vaccination is more powerful than God more powerful than his seal and I gave the two conditions of sealing one direct reference to 11 although the word sealing is not used it is used measured you measured those that worship in the temple true worshipers those that are faithful in worship God knows who belongs to him and they are measured they are not cast out they are protected from destruction and the ceiling is a clear reference to Ezekiel chapter 9 where a man with a writing writing kit he had a writing instrument like a scribe and he wrote the word town the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet on the foreheads and God tells him to look for people that lament that were sigh and groaning over the abominations committed in the city committed in Israel so those people that were sealed or with towel written on their heads and I referred to Revelation 14 verse 1 as well the name his name and the name of his father were written on the heads uh, so being written and sealed are almost similar the uh, same 144,000 um, mentioned in Revelation 17 and, and 14 as well so and we should be lamenting and groaning and sighing state of the church state of our nation but some people just go on their merry way as if nothing is happening <laughs> everything is fine you know and sometimes when you speak out uh, you are accused of being critical judgmental and so on but if you want to be sealed by God then it's your heart attitude are you opposing the forces of darkness are you crying and sighing groaning concerning all the abominations the wickedness within the church in Ezekiel chapter 9 the elders were committing abomination the leaders of Israel right in the midst of God's temple we see brothers and sisters so really at the end time if you want to make it through the great tribulation because Revelation 17 the ceiling uh, chapter uh, se uh, 7 not 17 7 verses 1 to 3 in particular 
And then verse 10 says that these are the ones that come out of ek in the in the Greek preposition is ek, which means they go through the tribulations. They make it successfully by the sealing of the living God, with the seal of the living God. So if a person comes to me and say, Pastor, I believe that I'm protected. I believe in divine protection. Am I going to discourage or question his faith? Even in Romans, it says that each one of us minister according to the measure of our faith. Am I going to question that he has this faith in his heart that God will protect him? I won't question him. And I won't judge him if at the end of the day he gets infected with COVID-19. He or she passes away. Because that may be God's will for us to die is gain, to live is Christ. So for Christians, our outlook must be theologically formed, theologically shaped, and don't go with the crowds. It doesn't matter whether it's 99% of the majority. Last Sunday, I preached about Jeremiah. I mentioned in passing, it's not my main text. Jeremiah 5, God says, Go through the midst of Jerusalem. If you can find one righteous man, I will pardon, I will spare this city. But the prophet Jeremiah couldn't find one single righteous person. This is the end time, brothers. Don't follow the majority. Maintain your integrity, maintain your faith. So, so basically I'm saying these two things. Those that have listened to me, for most people, go ahead, be vaccinated. But I won't judge them if they are not vaccinated. If they ask my advice, I'll say, perhaps you should ask an advice about the specialist, but I'm a theologian, I'm a biblical scholar. So I'm speaking from the biblical perspective. First and foremost, it is the protection of God. And also, the church should embrace everyone because God wants to save everyone. The church is the pillar and ground of truth. The gospel, our testimony, brings people to Christ. And if we make more and more restrictions, who can come into the church? We may be like the Pharisees. We don't enter in the kingdom of heaven and we are taking away the keys. <laughs> and we are hindering others from entering the kingdom of heaven. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for listening to this vlog, this car vlog. If you are West Malaysian, I, I wish you happy Independence Day, 31st of August, 1957. The Federation of Malay States uh, obtained independence from Brit British rule. But for us Sabahans and Sarawakians, we'll wait until 16th of September uh, to celebrate our National Day when we and Singapore, together with Federation of Malay States, form the country or the nation of Malaysia. That will only come on the 16th of September, just over two weeks from now. So thank you and God bless you. Amen.